everyone, and welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace. And I'm your host, Chris Shea. And today, since it is the beginning of a new year, what I thought that I would speak about is talking about newness, which brings us to the topic of mindfulness. And the reason I wanted to bring up the topic of mindfulness is that if you listen to my podcasts and if you look at some of my videos, my writings, most of everything that I do, including my life coaching and counseling, is focused on this thing called mindfulness. So I thought we would spend some time talking about that. One of the other reasons I wanted to talk about mindfulness is I am very grateful that we have many new viewers and listeners. So I really appreciate everyone's support. Uh, Due to everyone's support, we have moved from just being on Spreaker, which is where we are. Uh, We are also now found on SoundCloud and on iTunes on TuneIn, and there's probably some other place I'm just not thinking of it right now. But it's great that we are gaining more listeners, and with the listener support, uh, we're able to branch out into uh, those other features, especially the iTunes. So thank you to everyone who uh, is with us and who is listening and Uh, These are also posted over on my YouTube and my Vimeo page uh, to learn more about me and my services. You can go over to my webpage, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. So just put that out there for all of our new listeners. So thank you. So when you listen to a lot of what I talk about, and I mention a lot about mindfulness, the whole topic of mindfulness comes up really because it's something that is gaining more traction in the Western world, gaining more traction in the clinical world. It's a concept that's been with us for many, many years. And when I mean many years, I'm talking about a concept that's been with us uh, for a few thousand. When you look at mindfulness, what we talk about is staying centered into the present moment. We look at mindfulness as living in the moment, not judging the moment, feeling the moment, living the moment. Now I'll explain all of these and what I mean, but hopefully you've already started to notice that when I talk about living in the moment, finding the moment, that that sounds very much like meditation. Because it is. It's a form of meditation. It also sounds very much uh, on the topic of what you might hear from some Buddhist masters what people would commonly refer to as Zen. All of these traditions, when you're looking at Zen or Buddhism, are focusing on the meditation piece where we need to look at ourselves and what we're doing in this moment. Now what's wonderful about this is this concept is not just relegated to a spiritual technique, It's not something where nowadays people are saying, well, that's what Eastern uh, practitioners will do, but that's not what we do here in the West. Because if you were to look up the literature or just do a Google search uh, or a Bing search or Yahoo or whatever you use, if you do one of those searches, what you will find when you put in the word mindfulness are thousands of websites. But not just thousands of websites, if you do a research, 
what you'll find is there's a lot of articles being written, a lot of peer-reviewed journal articles, uh, books on this topic. So this has really become something that the Western world is taking on and naming. And I say naming because when I started in the counseling field way back 20 some years ago, the concepts of focusing on the present moment, especially when I was working in the substance abuse field, that was what we were stressing with our clients. How do you stay focused in the present moment? Because in the present moment, you can work on uh, you know, some of your fears, you can work on your worries. When you're in the present moment, you can deal with any of your cravings, any of your triggers. A lot of the talk that I was working with my clients about is really what we now call mindfulness. So looking again at the definition, mindfulness would be focusing on this present moment non-judgmentally. When we talk about focusing on this present moment, I like that concept because what we have to realize is that this present moment, what is happening right now, is all that we have. Our past moments are our history. We don't deny our history. We have to embrace our history. We have to cope with the consequences of our history. When I say consequences, that could be positive. Making right decisions is going to give you good consequences, and that's what you're dealing with in the present moment. And the opposite is true as well. So we've made some bad decisions in life, and we're now dealing with the consequences of those decisions now here in the present moment. Because, see, the future we don't have either. The future is something we could plan for, we can think about, but we don't live in the future. We don't understand the future. We don't know what the future holds. So the past is already gone. We can't go backwards in time and fix something in the past. It's not like the movies. And as you know, we can't go forward into the future and see what exactly is going to happen and prepare for that. All we have is this present moment. Now, does that mean that we never prepare or plan for the future? Does that mean that we forget the past? No, on both accounts. For you see, it's the past and our experiences and our decisions and our consequences that have all built up to teach us who we are today. Our past and our experiences and our choices have made us who we are today. For better, for worse, for indifferent, this is who I am because of my past. That's not a blame. That's just stating a fact. What I did in my past is what taught me certain life lessons, what I've done in my past, what I've seen in my past, what I've experienced in my past, has shaped who I have become today. Now when we look toward the future, can we try to make plans for the future? Definitely we want to make plans for the future. But the plans need to be plans that will lead us into what is going to bring us some betterment in the future. We can't plan for specifics. There's a lot about the future that's unknown and out of our control. Those we can't plan for necessarily because they're out of our control. Now we can try to have some game plans for different scenarios.